So many of our students ask, what about math? Do I need to know, or do I need to be good at math to be good in finance? And then many students who are not finance majors yet, they are um, reluctant to study finance because the perception is that finance requires a lot of math. So in this video, I wanted to address this common misperception. So the common perception is that most people believe they need to be good in math to even choose or study the finance as a major. And traditionally, only quantitative people were involved in finance and therefore the diversity in the financial industry was quite low. Only the math aptitude people uh, would be involved in math or even choose it as a career. Um, however, the financial industry is not limited to math jobs. And it is true that some areas of finance require heavy math. I mean, some areas uh, are, are nothing but math. Uh, but most areas, um, when you look at the number of people working, the most areas of finance are actually a lot more qualitative and conceptual than people realize. Um, some examples of math heavy financial uh, fields include quantitative computing, financial technology companies, quantitative financial analysis and research. And, you know, I chose one example, which is insurance actuaries, which actually have a lot more math majors than even finance majors. Um, so within the industry of finance, these would be probably good examples of financial areas that require heavy math. But on the other hand, um, you know, areas such as wealth management uh, may not require as much math. In fact, with wealth management, you have uh, a lot more lawyers involved, um, insurance um, agents involved that look at more to the selling side of, of, of finance rather than actually um, calculating the actuali actuaries. Um, wealth management may involve uh, estate planning. Wealth management may involve um, you know, actual investment choice, choices with qualitative financial analysis and qualitative research. And, um, and finance also may involve product sales. Um, in a lot of the cases, uh, there are a lot more uh, qualitative work in finance than quantitative work. Um, with respect to number of people who work in the field, I think uh, it's safe to say that most uh, jobs in finance may not require advanced levels of math. Um, and, and the amount of math that you have to know is no more required than any other major in the College of Business. Um, so should you, for instance, disregard an analysis about Nike from an actual athlete? And, and this is an example that I actually came up with because in our student managed investment fund, we have students, we had students who were actual athletes and they evaluated companies for us, such as Nike, Under Armour, Adidas, and, and their experience with the product actually enlightened us a lot more than just going about with financial quantitative analysis. Um, similarly with Estee Lauder, for instance, we had students in the past who uh, simply evaluated the product and the industry and, and the customers and the clients. And um, it was an area that I was not aware of. And, and therefore, um, it actually allowed me to learn quite a bit. So how is it that we actually get to disregard an analysis about Estee Lauder from a person who actually uses the product? Um, and also, again, with, uh, should you disregard an analysis about Apple from an actual customer? Like, for instance, I use Apple and I'm recording this on an iPad and the thing you just heard came from an iPhone. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's just I know, for instance, that iTunes may not be the perfect experience, but then, you know, I, I tried Samsung and I wasn't really happy about it. And then compared to the Apple, you know, I could have seen Apple would have you know, won the, um, the cell phone war 10 years coming. But um, like I said, can you disregard such an analysis from an actual customer? So it's not always just a quantitative analysis or a ratio analysis, but it is um, 
you know, it could be a significant or a qualitative analysis could be a significant portion of our financial undertaking. And um, so I also wanted to, uh, you know, do a, um, you know, an example, for instance, if, um, you know, an analogy to carpentry and culinary and finance, and these, you know, three fields look so different, but if you think about it, to build woodwork, you need to learn and you need to know how to use carpentry tools. And to cook, you need to learn how to use kitchen tools. And to finance, you need to learn how to use financial tools. So, um, you know, even though a lot of the fields look so different, um, what you actually end up doing is, is pretty much the same. You learn the tools and you, you learn how to apply them. And um, you wouldn't think that you would need math for carpentry. You wouldn't think that you would need math for culinary. And um, so finance, why would you actually believe that the math is a prerequisite or advanced level of math is a prerequisite for finance? I think it's a misperception. In fact, I believe that each craft is a combination of art and science. And a, a carpenter may know how to use all the tools, but he or she may not be an artist and um, he'll still build woodwork, but he can't do art. So, you know, knowing the tool or, you know, similarly with a cook, for instance, uh, he may know all the tools and he may still cook, but, you know, it may not be the artistic form of culinary. It may be just simple cooking, right? Um, so, in fact, it's much easier to teach tools to an artist, um, you know, but you can't make an artist out of a person who's not an artist, right? So aptitude for art cannot be taught. So um, you may actually have the talent for finance and you may be holding yourself back because of your fear that advanced level of math uh, may be a prerequisite for finance. But I, I would suggest at least looking into it um, and, and don't let your fear of math keep you from pursuing what could be your potential uh, career. And um, it, 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 the level of math uh, it, it is not, uh, in my opinion, any more than any other major in the College of Business, um, except for a few subfields of finance where you really need that much advanced math. Uh, but if you think about it, econ use uh, econometrics that could be significantly more demanding than any other. And today, when you look at marketing, you have uh, digital marketing that, that has significant levels of analytics. And um, that complicates um, a lot of the traditional marketing even. So how is that even less math than what we use in finance? So um, like I said, I just wanted to you know, create this video to talk about whether um, you should be, you know, fearful of how much math is required uh, for finance. And, um, and thank you for watching. And thank you. Bye now.